G'day, this is Adam of Ava Magnetic Levitation Australia. Today we'd like to show you where we got to with HHO hydrogen cells. We did a lot of work more recently with the HHO, but like most small businesses, are suffering under hard economic times and can't continue the work at this time. So we'd like to release some of the things we've learnt in a hope that it may help, aid or assist others in their own projects. So, this is the hydrogen cell that we built more recently. We did build one identical to this and we tested it, get some rough readings and outputs, um, work out mainly with temperature is what we were looking at. And then we rebuilt the same cell again, but we inserted copper tubing through the full length and down through the windings of the stainless steel. Obviously we did this before we bent it. You also have to weld up one end of the stainless steel and make sure that it's perfectly sealed. Otherwise your water will turn a funny colour as the copper corrodes away from the inside out. Now, when you build a cell like this, all you're really doing is rather than passing the current through the full length of a piece of stainless steel tubing, which is used in resistors, which will heat up if you push the current through it, we've inserted copper through the centre of it and welded up the end. We've found that this reduces the heat, reduces the amount of current used, and aids in production. Because all you're really doing now is passing current through the copper core and out through a very thin side wall of stainless steel. In this video, we'll show this cell running, um, producing gas. Anyway, this is the same cell. It probably needs a good clean. Um, the electrolyte that it's in isn't exactly that clean either. Um, we've put it in and tested it. Its maximum draw current at the moment is 18 amps. We'll be running it on a 12 volt car battery that isn't fully charged. Um, running it through a pulse width modulator purchased by um, HHO Power Cell in America. Uh, available on eBay. Wasn't very expensive at all. And we connect the um, terminal ends to the copper, not the stainless steel. And what we'll do is just turn it on and I'll bring it up to about 25% duty cycle and I'll try and show you the magnetic effect and I'll turn it up to about 90 where it clouds. Sort of hard to see but um, you definitely get an increased effect of magnetism due to the copper inside of course. And the production from these cells um, as always seems to be quite good. And we've run them for quite long periods of time and the heat produced is quite minimal if the frequency set right and the electrolytes set right. 